What is going on guys? Hope you guys are having an amazing day. My name is Irvin and today we're going to be fixing the 2JZ's kryptonite and that is the harmonic balancer. Now these things are pretty notorious on 2JZ's for going up. These are actually a two-piece construction. Basically they have the balancer and then they've got the actual pulley on it. This mates with the drive belt and actually spins all of your accessory drives. Now the way that those two pieces are joined together is by one very small little piece of rubber and when they get old which they're starting to get old they separate and then you get all kinds of failures I've seen battery lights come on I've seen noises I've seen the pulleys come completely apart and just throw themselves into the radiator there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong if you leave it unattended for too long and we don't want to do that we don't want this to happen because this is probably gonna ruin some stuff and we don't want that so we're gonna replace it make sure that this never happens to us. The unit that we're gonna be installing is actually an upgrade unit that's made by a company called Fluid Damper. This guy is SFI rated, which means that you can take it on a lot of race tracks that wouldn't normally allow it with a factory harmonic balancer and it's a bolt-on design instead of the stupid rubber design. So it's gonna make sure that that type of separation is never gonna happen to us and it's gonna balance the engine probably a good amount better than the factory one. So let's get to installing it. Obviously, we're gonna have to pull the radiator out to be able to get to it. So let's start with that. So I'm gonna start off by taking this big old cover off just so that we can access the radiator drain and anything that we have to work on from underneath the car. So right down here guys, we can see our crank pulley. This is actually one out of a junkyard because when I did my timing belt, mine separated on me also. So I just got one out of a junkyard so that I could have something that worked for now while I saved up for a nice one because these are quite a bit more expensive. So I'm gonna be replacing it today just to be safe. So once we have that cover off, we can go ahead and roll under and see a couple things. This first of all is our radiator drain. And right here we have our lower radiator hose. Now on automatics you're gonna have some training cooler hoses right up here but the manuals don't have that so you won't have to worry about it. On the automatics I usually just pull the hoses off and put some spark plugs in them just to make sure that they don't leak. Other than that that's gonna be about it for the bottom. This temp sensor does have to come off. Make sure you put that on because this controls your fans. If you don't have that in then it won't turn on your fans and you'll overheat your car. So make sure that this gets plugged in after everything's said and done. Don't ask me how I know. Make sure our radiator cap is off. It'll help it drain faster. No, you bitch. Well, looks like I need a radiator cap. And we'll let her chooch for a little bit. So up top, all we need to remove the radiator is we gotta take the air box out, makes it a lot easier. Uh, these two are the mounts for it. You just take those two off, they're 10 mils. And then these two fan connectors along with the upper radiator hose. That's pretty much it. Once I get these two guys out and the lower radiator hose, I'll be able to just pull this straight up. Gross. So as you guys can see, removing the radiator gave us all of the room that we need to access the crank pulley. Now. This is where it gets a little bit difficult. The crank pulley bolt is a 22 millimeter, which is a pain in the ass to get out, all right? Unless you have the proper tools, which I'm about to show you. These are cheap, get them on Amazon. They will absolutely save your life. They're amazing. However, the only thing that sucks is that with the new fluid damper setup, it's not actually gonna be able to work on that. So I'm gonna have to figure something else out once I have that on there. But for now, with the stock crank pulley, It'll work and it'll be nice. This is a Toyota crank pulley holding tool. It's got two bolts and this guy. So pretty much what we're gonna be doing is on a crank pulley like ours, we just bolt it onto it and that keeps it from rotating. We just put a breaker bar on this end and that allows us to hold the pulley without damaging this. That's actually how I messed up the last one was I used a chain wrench on it around this part of the pulley and it spun. So make sure that when you're taking these off and replacing them, use a tool like this, because this is gonna help a lot. You can also put it in fifth gear and put the e-brake on, but even then sometimes it's a little sketchy and the starter method works sometimes, but it, it's also really sketchy. This works every time. 
Just gotta have some muscle for it. Then we're just gonna grab this guy right here. And we're actually gonna tighten it. And that's going to release the tension from the belt. And just pull that guy out. So as you guys can see, I've got my adapter bolted onto the crank pulley. Now for the fun part. So like I said, damn shorty, somebody's having fun. So we're gonna go ahead and stick our 22 on the crank pulley bolt, get another breaker bar onto this guy. All right, so now we just loosen the thing. And uh, that's the fun part. Oh god, that's tight. Let's try this again. Different angle. I can't fucking get this. All right, new plan. I've got one bar resting on the frame rail, all right? The other bar with the extension on my crank pulley. Hopefully I'll have the raw power to be able to get this guy off. Here we go, baby. This is it for all the marbles. For all the marbles. Ah. Okay. That's not bad. That's not bad. Hopefully. Oh. Jesus. Oh. 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 Oh, the sweet. Sweet release of a broken crank pulley bolt. That was way too difficult. What the hell? It has never been that hard for me. Don't say it. Don't you say it. All right, so now crank pulley bolt should be hand tight. And it is. So we can just go ahead and pull that guy out. The bolt's out, but it's kind of trapped in the tool. So now that the bolt's out, we got another problem. That pulley is really freaking on there. So, that's where this guy comes in. Pulley puller set. I'll put a link to one on Amazon. They're super nice to have. Make sure you have something like that for this. So the puller just bolts on to the same places that we bolted on the crank pulley holder. And then you just turn this screw and it'll slowly pull the crank pulley off. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off and we'll get it ready for the new one. So you can see the difference between an old, very bad harmonic balancer to the one that we pulled out of the car, which was actually pretty okay to our fluid damper. So you can see how it fully separates. It's got this part that's only held in by the rubber seal on it. That's not present in the fluid damper. We have three bolts and that's the only way that that thing is held together. So this thing is never gonna come apart like one of these would. And actually this thing on the outside is filled with fluid to make sure that it can properly dampen the harmonics that the engine produces when it's running. So this is gonna be a lot better for our engine. But as you can see, it doesn't have the same places for our tools to fit into. That's gonna make it a little bit more difficult we might have to find a different tool to be able to do that. You want to make sure that your crank snout is nice and clean. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that with some Scotch-Brite and throw the fluid damper on. So I just threw the fluid damper on. You want to make sure that you line up the key on the crankshaft to the keyway on the fluid damper perfectly before you start trying to push it on really. It's really only going to go in in one orientation. So you got to make sure you get that right. And if you try to bolt it in with it wrong, it's gonna mess some stuff up so make sure that's right all right so i got the fluid damper sucked all the way in with the bolt it is uh it's quite a tight fit so it is gonna take the bolt to push it all the way in just make sure your keyway is lined up perfectly now we gotta torque it now here's the fun part because from fluid damper's website the 2jz needs 239 foot pounds so that's what our torque wrench is gonna be set to that's what we're gonna torque it to. 225, 230, 239. Almost at the top of what my torque wrench can do. Oh God. Woo! That's tight. That's fucking tight. Now at that point, all that's pretty much left for us to do is throw everything back together, put some coolant in it, and get it all bled. 
which I like to use one of these funnels for. Super nice. These guys actually fit right on the radiator cap and they make sure that you don't spill any coolant and they make it super easy to bleed the entire system. I'm gonna leave a link to those on Amazon. I'm honestly super happy that I got that fluid damper in because now I never have to worry about that being an issue ever again. If you guys are thinking about doing this but think that the fluid damper is a little too much money, that's totally cool. There are other options. You can go with the stock crank pulley which is about as expensive as the fluid damper and still has the potential to fail later. You can go with an aftermarket one like something you would get at a parts store and those are usually a little bit cheaper but i've had a little bit of issues with uh some of the ones that you can get online before i've seen 1a auto ones and amazon ones kind of be a little weird so i don't know if i trust those all the way but they are a lot cheaper so i mean it's a kind of a crapshoot if you get a good one you're good if not then you're right back at square one um that being said hope you guys enjoyed the video i'll see you guys next time